Welcome back to Oakleaf Cakes Bake Shop. My name is Amanda, I'm the owner. Today we're gonna to be making a gingerbread house and I'm gonna show you how to do it yourself. Um, I'm gonna show you how to roll out the dough in the first part and then use templates to cut the right size panels. And then in the second part of this series, I'm gonna show you how to use some royal icing to do all the details and add on all the candy. Part one of our do-it-yourself gingerbread house baking is to have your dough made. Um, any regular gingerbread sugar cookie dough will be just perfect. Um, so have that made and ready. You, you need more than you think you need. Um, it does take a, a good amount of dough to get these panels made. Um, so we, we've created paper panels and we've laminated them so they don't get greasy on our dough. Um, you need three of them and you'll make two panels of each size. Um, so this one is um, our two end pieces and we'll have a picture or a PDF with the dimensions on so you can reference them later. Um, but we need two of these. These are our front and back of the house panels. And then the skinnier one is the side of the house panels where the windows go. And then the bigger piece rectangle is the two roof pieces. So have those ready. Um, we'll be tracing those um, to get our cookies made. Um, the other tools that you're going to need are a pizza wheel, uh, roller cutter friend, and then two cookie cutters we need are a round and a square, um, size, sized enough so that you get a round window on the front panel and a square window on the side panels. That is roughly the right size that you need. And then we need a little orange tool, a uh, fondant shaper tool. We call it the orange tool, but it's like a triangular. It's for drawing lines. We're just going to be indenting like the window panes and a door frame. And then um, if you don't have one of these, it's fine. You can just use a ruler. Uh, but we use the scissoring roller cutter to indent our roof with some light cross, cross hatching um, for the roof detailing of the shingles and stuff. So that will be our friend. If you don't have this, you can just freehand some lines or you can use a ruler. Either, either way is good. All right, so we can set all these aside. And we're just gonna roll out our dough. So the gingerbread dough, you wanna roll until it's about a quarter of an inch thick, approximately, on some flour. And ideally, you're rolling a rectangle here. That way you have plenty of uh, square footage to cut your shapes out of, because mostly you're cutting rectangles. Um, Rolling a circle or a weird amoeba blob really isn't going to do you any favors. So if you can roll out a square or a rectangle, you'll get more cuts per sheet. And if you turn the dough every couple times you roll, that'll ensure you're getting a nice symmetrical shape. But also uh, that'll keep it from sticking to the table because sticking to the table means you have to restart <laughs> and re-roll and start over. And that can be frustrating. Also be careful not to put too much pressure down in one area of the dough versus the other. You wanna have this nice and even on all sides. All right, and you can sort of pick up the edge and run your finger and thumb around and you'll be able to see like, this is really thin over here and this is thicker over here. So I'll do some more rolling on that side. Also very important when you're rolling gingerbread is to have your gingerbread apron on. Just saying, it helps. I guess we can do a measurement. I said a quarter of an inch thick. Hey, look, that's exactly professional. All the way around. This side's a little bit thinner, so I can squish that in a little bit. Basically, the reason you want this all to be the same thickness is so that your, your house is more structurally sound. If it's gonna be really thin in one corner of the house and thicker in the other, the thin part is likely to break, so. Having it all rolled to the same thickness is important. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, you need two cookies of each template. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do is find the best, I have another sheet of dough ready too. So what I think might be the easiest is to get all three pieces out of one sheet and then all three pieces out of the other. I almost forgot, two cookie cutters you definitely need are little gingerbread men. Um, they're both gingerbread men. One's like 
a little wonky and he's more dancing. Uh, and this is more straight edge gingerbread man. <laughs> um, so we're gonna punch some of each. Basically, you need gingerbread men to go in your house. So make sure you have those ready. Uh, it looks like I'm not making good use of my dough here, but I definitely want the best pieces cut for my panels and then all the extra scraps I can cut out of the gingerbread men. So we can just run this along, pizza cutter. Just make sure when you're cutting that you're not cutting at a weird angle. Make sure you're straight up and down. That way you get nice crisp edges when they bake. And make sure you're as squared up and straight as possible. It is easier to roll your gingerbread dough if it's a little bit chilled, as mine was. If you, um, and they will also bake uh, in more exact shapes. If you chill the dough, before you bake them. So we're gonna cut these out, put them on a sheet pan, and then we're gonna put them in the fridge for like half an hour, maybe an hour, and then they'll be ready to bake. Uh, chilling the dough firms it up, and that way it won't spread into a blob as quickly in the oven. So sheet pan. Really get these guys up. Don't let them stretch too far. Also, you've noticed I've kept, I've taken good care to not get a ton of flour all over the top of my dough. Um, that, because some of that flour, if you have way too much of it, like the backside might have, will end up baking into it and then it'll be really frustrating to get it off later. So, as much as you need to keep it from sticking to the rolling pin, but not too much where, put that guy here. Not too much where it's going to bake into it permanently. All right. Um, we can go ahead and cut these guys. All right, so you have your panels cut out. We have the, the front door, the side, windows, and then the roof. If you find when, they, when you've picked up your panels from the table to your baking pan, if they've moved around, make sure they get squared back up nice and straight. A good tool for that is, of course, the fondant smoother. So we're not fondanting, but if you have a straight edge or a nice squared up fondant smoother, that'll straighten out your pieces. You don't want any walls that are warping. All right, so now we need our cookie cutters for indenting the texture. So the square cookie cutter is the window on the side, two windows, and you're not, you're not cutting all the way through here. You're just doing enough of an indentation where um, when it bakes, it'll hold the line. So we have two windows and using this orange tool, indent some window panes. And you don't have to copy this. You can do whatever windows you want, but this is how we do it. And then up here, we have this cute little round attic window. That goes up there. And then window panes on that guy. And you can do the lines pretty deep, but not deep enough where you're cutting through. And then the door is right below that window. And I use the top of the rounded cookie cutter to get the door started. And then finish that line straight down. And then our roof panel, you can just go ahead with this tool and draw your cross hatching lines. Um, we have this handy dandy scissoring roller cutter that we like to use. So you can widen this out to however wide you want your shingles. Goes that way. Look at me. Let's do this off the sheet pan. Just be extra careful you're not cutting through too deep. You're just making indentations. Okay. Here's our roof panel. Square that back up. So these are pretty warm now after I've cut them. What I'm gonna do is put them in the, in the refrigerator for like a half an hour or maybe even an hour. Colder's better. Um, just so they firm up, that way they don't lose too much of their shape when they bake. So my panels have had their hour in the fridge to firm up really nice and chilled. Um, that'll ensure they hold their shape when they bake. 
So the panels, you want to bake for about 15 minutes, maybe a few minutes more on a 350 degree oven. And then the mini men, if you have a tray of those, um, these little miniature gingerbread men bake for about seven minutes and then they're good to go. Make sure you join us on part two of the series where we will show you how to assemble these gingerbread cookie panels into a house and decorate it with all of our Christmas candy.